Sea otters are a keystone species in the Monterey Bay ecosystem. Without sea otters, the sea urchins would destroy the kelp forest population and create a habitat consisting of only sea urchins. However, since sea otters and sea urchins have a predator and prey relationship where otters eat the sea urchins, that way the sea urchin population can be controlled and kelp forests can grow, which attracts more animals and increases the biodiversity of the ecosystem. When sea otters are returned to the Monterey Bay, they control the sea urchin's population and increase the kelp. Kelp attracts more animals to the Monterey Bay, so there's more fish for the fishermen to catch. Kelp also holds carbon dioxide, so when there's an abundance of kelp, there's less carbon dioxide and less carbon taxes for our economy. Are sea otters a keystone species? The answer is yes. Sea otters are a keystone species. This is because they are main consumers of sea urchins keeping their population in check. If there were too many sea urchins, kelp population would have a major decrease putting a huge negative impact on this marine ecosystem. Not only do otters keep these populations balanced, but they increase biodiversity by creating these healthy levels of kelp and kelp forests. What kind of effects will sea otters reintroduction have on natural ecosystems the environment in California. Sea otters are keystone species, so when they are reintroduced to natural ecosystems, they will have many positive impacts on the environment. Species will flourish as levels of sea urchins are balanced, causing healthy levels of kelp and kelp forest. These kelp forests help promote biodiversity as they are perfect spots for fish and other living species. What is currently being done to help the sea otters return? The sea otters have been protected by the International Fur Seal Treaty since 1911. The US, Russia, Japan, and Great Britain have agreed and decided on banning the large-scale commercial sea otter hunting to allow their populations to recover. Right now, a group of scientists are studying the otter ecology like the reproductions, diet, home range, and health. Researchers are also working hard to get a better understanding on what is harming or threatening the sea otters so that they can find ways to recover them. The Monterey Bay Aquarium in California are helping the sea otters by implanting trackers and radio transmitters so that they can know the otters' behaviors in the wild ocean. The tracker battery lasts at least two years, so the researchers can watch its behaviors until the otters reach adulthood and reproduce. How can humans influence the return of sea otters? Us humans are the biggest threat to sea otters. Direct conflict with humans can cause influence on the return of sea otters, like for example, hunting fishing gear and gear and fishing gear entanglements, boat strikes, oil spills and pollution, disease and loss of kelp. Hunting is not a threat now, but it used to be until the US, Japan, Russia and Great Britain agreed to be ban agreed to ban the program. Fishing gear entanglements are definitely still a problem now. The fishnet Fishers use, sometimes choke or tangle the sea otters causing them to die, same with boat strikes. One of our major problems are pollution and oil spills. These are extremely toxic to marine animals, which cause a lot of them to die too. Disease can sometimes also kill them, because it can't get cured by itself. Why should we take action? We should take action because the biggest reason the sea otter's population decreased was because of humans. Humans are the biggest threats to them. Human activities have the potential to increase disease transmission and the flow of human pollutants into the marine environment. Thanks to sea otters, researchers and scientists are able to look further and know the ocean's health and its marine ecosystem.